I just thought it would be nice for them to see it. But then people just started licking it. And I was like, what are you doing? You don't know who's licked there before. Like, what are you doing? Like, they, nobody was afraid of that. It was weird. We've all seen sculptures made from bronze, marble and clay. But what about sculptures made from sugar? In Berlin, Joseph's amazing sugar sculptures are sold to collectors around the world. My name's Joseph Maher and I'm an artist working with sugar in Berlin. I'm originally from Australia. We followed him as he revealed his most ambitious piece to date. But first, why sugar? The visual aspect of it is that it's just very attractive. It's this colorful glass-like material. It makes you want to touch it and, and eat it and have it. And that's quite interesting as a substance because paint doesn't do that, bronze doesn't do that. But you have an experience of sugar daily. All these different states during your day are affecting who you are. It's your identity is shifting constantly. It's different transitions from being sleepy to excited, from wanting wanting, wanting more money, wanting more power, wanting more security in your life. Those wants are represented really well with sugar. So it's quite like this ubiquitous material that says a lot. Joseph's work has gone international. You can find his eye candy on display in Stockholm, Venice, Sydney and Berlin. Some exhibitions I've had where there's been uh, one sculpture that's protected from humidity with uh, resin and one that's not. I never expected people to eat the sculpture. I just thought it would be nice for them to see it. But then people just started licking it. And I was like, what are you doing? You don't know who's licked there before. Like, what are you doing? Like, they, nobody was afraid of that. It was weird. I just love the look on people's faces when they understand it's sugar, because most people don't actually know. And then when they hear that it's sugar, they go, what? And then, then they look at it again. And I think that makes them feel more part of it when they know what it's made of. So how do you make these impressive sculptures? I'm using 3D scanning. There's high resolution scanners that get an amazing three dimensional snapshot of reality. And that's really what I'm going for. I don't want my interpretation, my emotional interpretation of a human being. The actual technical process is step one, find your subject matter. 3D scan a person in a certain pose. Then you need to produce the, the 3D data into an object like 3D printing. So then you have your positive and it's just a physical representation of the data. Then you need to make a negative of that and you use silicon. And then you need something to hold the silicon together, which is plaster and wood. And that's called the mother mold. And then you have, have to have a hole somewhere to be able to pour your sugar into. And you're cooking sugar and you're pouring it in. It's going into the hole and it's coming up and there's all these bubbles and all crazy stuff happening. And then it fills up and then you close it and then you wait until the sugar actually hardens. It takes about 12 hours. And then there's time to open it. And then you hope that it actually worked and the sugar went everywhere into all the difficult parts of the mold. So there's also lots of trickiness with molds, air pockets and all that kind of stuff you have to look out for. Once you've done that, you open it up and you can take out your sculpture. Then I have to protect it like super fast. And if you do that, then um, you have a finished work. The cooking of the sugar process is interesting. You're generally just using the normal sugar you get from supermarkets, white refined sugar, mixing it with water and then adding corn syrup or grape sugar. You have to cook it quite hot to 140 degrees and then you can add color to it. That's the one secret I'm not gonna divulge. Most people will just use normal food coloring. That will degrade over time. It will lose its color. So I've found some special color that, that doesn't degrade in the heat. What are some of the challenges of working with sugar? Working with sugar is a unique thing. It's incredibly difficult. I'm doubting myself sometimes. You have to be very careful with every step. It's actually like treating a living thing. You have to be so delicate with it so that it doesn't melt or it doesn't break. Temperature and humidity affect it greatly. Once it's made, it's quite solid and lives for a long time. The older sculptures I have are now 14 years old and they're doing well. I like the challenge of making something that should be temporary, permanent. And now to unveil Joseph's latest work, his most ambitious yet. My next project is uh, called Open Heart. It's going to be a giant sugar sculpture of a human heart. And in a park, it's actually going to be quite large, two and a half meter high. It's the biggest thing I've ever tried to do. It's about putting 
yourself out in the open. So I'm putting my heart out there. I wear my heart on my sleeve, so it, it really fits well. We're gonna cast the sculpture in the park. We're gonna have to cook between 500 and 1,000 kilos of sugar on site on the day. Three people at least cooking all this sugar for a good 12 hours. It's gonna be epic. That's if it goes well. <laughs> it's gotta all work as well. It's all gotta function. It will stay there for three weeks and it will melt unless people come and ride generator bicycles to power an air conditioner inside the glass box. The air conditioner has to regulate that temperature and it will not be connected to power. It will be only people riding bikes to actually power it. It has some kind of a living quality to it and I'm relying on people's good nature. What the artwork's really about is just people coming together. The shift in doing the human heart, this is a different context for sugar. It's the qualities that sugar has to represent something living because it changes when it gets too much humidity and heat. It looks like it's dying. It's this living substance. So why not show life a living thing like a heart? People are like, oh, what's this part of the heart? What's that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to know because the mystery of life for me is the magic of everything. When you put your hand on your chest and you feel your heart beating, you have that sense of this thing's keeping me alive, you know? And I love that's a magical thing. I think I really want to understand life. What are we doing here and what is going on, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and I think that's why I'm focused mainly on people and our experiences. If you talk to anybody, you will find that they've had some version of a transformation in their life. They've lost a loved one or they've gotten married or they've had kids. I found it very, very interesting to go into people's lives and to understand these transformations and then make an art object out of it. And it's a real test. It was really difficult. And I liked that as well, some, some challenge. So what's the future for Joseph and his sugary creations? With this project in particular, the big melting heart outside, I really would just love to do lots of that interactive stuff where people can sort of get involved because there's a real disconnect with art most of the time. Doing bigger projects for the future would be fantastic because I've just enjoyed this one so much. I have so much perseverance. To get through making works out of sugar, it has been the biggest challenge of my life. And so I just don't know where I've had all the energy. It's something to do with seeing the end result in my mind's eye and wanting to get there. And I'll just put up with anything. When the work is done and, and you finally see what you've been working towards, there's nothing like it. And it's, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> there's just really nothing like it. The weird thing is, it's, it's always better than you could imagine. I can't tell you why that happens either. It's a, that's part of the mystery. I think that must be what's interesting about it too. It's a mystery.